Hello everybody, welcome back to Kaladesh where the fires are still burning bright. Today we're doing our very first deck tech and in the theme of Kaladesh, sorry Chandra, we are going with the new Red Commander, Toralf, the God of Fury from the Kaldheim set. He's a absolutely lovely, very typical Red Commander. Uh, only two and two Red to cast, who are 5-4 Legendary God with Trample. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Toralf is going to deal that damage to any target other than that permanent, which obviously is very red, classic, burn everywhere you go. His flip side is Toralf's Hammer, which is a legendary artifact equipment for only one and a red. Um, the equipped creature has one and a red, tap, unattached Toralf's hammer. It can deal three damage to any target. And then in classic Thor style, the hammer will return to your hand. The equipped creature has plus three, plus nought, as long as it's legendary. A lot of people not really rate on this side of it. But as the commander, and obviously because he is rather overpowered, you're going to get a lot of attention very quickly in this deck. Toralf is going to get hit quite a few times. Being red, you're not going to be heavily reliant on draw or ramping. So I found that this one is actually quite a nice way to be able to get the commander back to my hand so I can cast him for that four so that the up commander cost doesn't rank up too quickly. So let's go on to the deck. So we're going to start off with the nice and boring stuff when it comes to the deck. We are running... 27 basic lands in the mountains there. Um, not the biggest amount, we've got 32 land total. But as I said, there's not a lot of ways which you can really draw or ramp into red without helping everybody else on the table. But the few non-basic lands we do have, we are going for a Buried Ruin, which taps for a colourless. You can sacrifice it to return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Always a nice ability, especially with, as you'll see, the artifacts which we're going to be running. Next up, we've got the classic Field of Ruin. I love this one. I consider it a stable for a lot of my decks, to be honest with you. Tap for a colourless, or you can destroy target non-basic land, and everybody gets a search for a basic land, but on the battlefield. Nice for getting rid of those problems, like your Rogue's Passage, Gaia's Cradles, everything like that. Next up, we've got Emergent Zone, another lovely one, especially in red. Um, so you can tap for a colourless, one tap and sack, and you can cast spells this turn as though they had flash. Which, as we're running 13 sorceries, that's going to be a really nice, useful effect where you can just suddenly turn the table on your opponent. Next up, a Detection Tower. Again, nice and useful, especially when we're going to be doing a lot of burn. Tap for a colourless, or if not, tap one and tap. Until end of turn, your opponents and creatures your opponents control with Hexproof can be the target of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have Hexproof. Very, very nice. Obviously, it's quite nice that it only lets you target them, not everybody on the board. And then our last non-basic land is this rather beautiful one I found the other day, a Dwarven Hold. It comes into play tapped. You may choose not to untap Dwarven Hold during your untap phase, and instead you put a storage counter on it. And then you can tap to remove any number of storage counters from Dwarven Hold and add a red for each one. Highly, highly recommend this. I only found this one literally a couple of few days ago. Bought five of them. I'm a rather heavy red player, to say the least. But yeah, just that being able to store them up is really, really nice. It's as close as you can get to ramp, unfortunately. <laughs> so we're going to go over the enchantments next. Um, start off with the lower CMC, working our way upwards. And we're going to start with Braid of Fire. So it's one and a red for an enchantment. This one is a bit pricey, not going to lie. It's got a community of upkeep where it's going to add one red mana to your mana pool. So obviously on the first turn you'll get one red mana. Second you'll get two, and so on and so forth. Obviously this is only usable during the upkeep, but it's going to work really quite nicely with the amount of instants we've got in here. All the X spells are also lovely. And we'll have a couple of things which will lead back to this one later on. So, personally, one of my absolute favourites. Love the art on this one. It's back from when I first started playing. It's a Mana Flare. Two and a red. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, it produces one additional mana of the same type. Yes, you're going to be helping your opponents. I'm not going to lie. 
But if you can find me anything like this in red, oh, I would love you forever. It's not very often you get to ramp out. And hopefully with Tor Alpha and the amount of burns in here, it's not going to matter how many extra creatures they're putting down, because they're all going to die. And next up we have the, one of my favourites, no one likes me for this one though, is Blood Moon. A two and a red, again, a quite a pricey one. It's an enchantment where it turns all non-basic lands into mountains, hence why we're only running five non-basics in here ourselves, which are just like your essential ones for this deck. But this can mess up a lot of opponents, especially if you're going up against a five colour deck. Obviously odds are they could be using a lot of non-basic lands. Next up, pulled this one years ago, back when it used to be a rare, and I finally found a use for it. Burning Anger, it's a bit pricey, a four and a red to cast, enchant creature, and you can tap to deal its damage equal to its power to any target, which obviously ties in with Toralf really, really nicely. It's essentially letting you ping off any creatures which you don't want or which your opponent's refusing to block with. And uh, next, the only repetition one we've got in here is Double Vision for 3 and 2 red, the enchantment. Uh, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, you can copy that spell and you choose new targets. Speaks for itself, really, to be perfectly honest with you. It's an enchantment, again, obviously, but it's not going to draw quite as much attention as something like your Blood Moon or your Mana Flare. So hopefully it won't get blown up too quickly. And then last up, yeah, this one's going to get blown up. It's the absolutely beautiful Fiery Emancipation. It's a very expensive card, both in cost and mana. So for six, if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. Now this is incredibly broken with Toralf, and it's going to be one of those things that is going to make you hate it. As we'll come across when we go to the instance in a little while. So, we are running 11 artifacts. Now a lot of these are all going to be quite your basic stuff. We're going to start off with a lovely, simple Traveller's Amulet. This is going to help us with our ramping issues. You can set, search light for a basic land card, put it in your hand. Not the best in the world, but red are beggars and they can't be choosers. Then we've got a Prying Blade for one. Two to equip, a quick creature gets plus one plus naught. And whenever a quick creature deals combat damage, you're gonna create yourself a treasure, which is again gonna help us with ramping out as much as we possibly can. Rather lovely one. Got this on a lot of my red decks at the moment. Is the relic amulet for two. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, so mainly just the instance on sorceries in this particular deck, you can put a charge counter onto relic amulet and then pay two and tap to remove all charge counters to deal that much to target a creature. It's nice because obviously you're going to be doing a lot of non-direct damage anyway with your instants and sorceries. And then this way you can just remove one creature if you haven't got one to hand. Or if you prefer to just smack it in someone's face. Next up is our other mana ramping equipment. It's a gold vein pick from Kaldheim. Two, one to equip. One plus one plus one. Blech. Whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, again, you can create yourself a treasure token. Simple one here again, the Armillary Spheres, two to cast. Two and sack. You can search your life for up to two basic lands, put them in your hand. I said, you need the land. You really do with red. So you need as much of this sort of stuff as you can get. Next up, we've got the Burnished Heart, which again, three to cast for a two-two. Sacrifice it, put two basic lands onto the battlefield, tapped, and shuffle your library. It's a lovely little way just to get that extra land out to pump all those massive spells of ours. So, Arcane Encyclopedia. I know what you're thinking. Not the greatest draw engine in the world. It's not, not gonna lie. But it's a nice cheap draw engine when it comes to money. It's only three to cast. Tap, pay three, tap, draw a card. Found out it works really, really well with braid of fire so if you haven't got anything which you can use in your upkeep you just tap draw an extra card lovely little advantage and one of the few ones which isn't gonna let everybody else draw next up one of my absolute favorite artifacts of all time the mirage mirror this has a use in every deck i know we're gonna be covering this at a later date 
but this is what I consider a staple card because this can be a copy of a, an artifact, creature, enchantment, or a land until end of turn. So if you need, ooh, let's say, a lot of damage dealt, copy your Fire Emancipation. If you need the draw and somebody's got a Ristic Study, copy that for a turn. These are literally such an underrated card. So, so highly recommended by myself. Then we've got the lovely Replicating Ring from the Coldheim set. It's three to cast. You can tap for one mana of any color. At the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to put a nighttime counter on it. Then when it's got eight or more, you remove them all. And you create eight replicated rings, which are snow artifact tokens, where again, you can tap to add one mana of any color. Odds are that might not happen, but if you do get it out early, you have got that chance and having all that additional mana. I mean, most of these artifacts, you'd be paying three to tap for one of any color, unless you've got like your arcane signets and stuff, of course. But it's just that fact that you can get nine out of that in the long run. Pyromancer's Goggles is our next one for five to cast. It's a legendary artifact. It's a bit of a pricey one. They're a bit missing online at the moment, unfortunately, as well, because a lot of people are after these. It's just a simple tap to pay one red to your mana pool. But when you use that to cast a red instant or sorcery, you can copy it and choose new targets for the copy. Obviously, synergizes rather beautifully in here. And then, because we love the Pyromancer's, it's the Gauntlet, another one which I found just the other day. Five to cast, so it's a bit pricey. And then if a red instant or sorcery spell you control, or a red planeswalk you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it's going to deal that much plus two instead. Which obviously with Toralf's ability, the Fiery Emancipation, so on and so forth, this is really going to add up nice and quickly. So even your smaller spells are going to end up hitting for a decent amount. Next up, we have 10 Instants. Probably one of the best cards in Magic, Lightning Bolt. One red, three damage to target creature or player. Just absolutely beautiful. Heat Ray, it's our first X spell. It's an instant one, of course, so you can use this one with your Braids of Fire for just X to target creature. Starstorm, it's X and two red. It's gonna deal X to each creature. So let's say if you pump this for 10, Toralf is gonna be blasting that fury of his around the whole entire board. This is a potential win gone for you later on in the game, if you've got enough mana out. Then we've got a Volcanic Geezer. This is X and two red to X to any target. So obviously this one will let you hit a Planeswalker or a player for just one additional, which is always nice. And then we've got a Ravaging Blaze, again, X and two red, X to target creature. But if you have a two or more instants and sorceries in your graveyard, which, let's be honest, you're probably going to, uh, it's also going to deal that X to the creature's controller. Two for one there. Speaking of two for ones, Comet Storm is again a lovely one for X and two red. So you can pay however much you want into that, but then every time you want to kick it, you've got to pay an additional one on top. But every time you kick it, you can choose a new target. So it's nice to be able to deal with a couple of few problems on the board at once. And then we've got an Electro Dominance, which is X and two red again. And it's gonna deal X to any target. But the beautiful thing about this is you can then cast a card from your hand with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. So we've all been there. Your opponent's got a massive creature on the board. You need to get rid of it. But at the same point, you need to bolster your own defenses. This will let you do both. Lovely card. Always worth the money. So uh, next up, we've got a soul seer. It's an uncommon. It's for two and a red. Uh, it does five damage to target creature or planeswalker. But the important hit is that it's going to lose the indestructible until end of turn. So there's not a lot of ways to deal with indestructible creatures in red. So it's just nice to have a couple of options available to you just in case. Demon Bolt might not appear to be the greatest one. Two and a red, four damage to creature or planeswalker. But what we like about this one is the foretell. So you can pay two and exile this from your hand face down. And then on any later turn, you can just pay one red to ping out four damage to a creature or planeswalker. So again, quite useful. And then our last instant today is going to be Inferno for five and two red. This is a lovely board here. 
It's going to deal six damage to all players and all creatures. And that's what you want. It doesn't matter if your own stuff's getting hit or not. Because odds are, when you're hitting the whole entire board with Toraf out, you're going to be wiping the whole entire board, and you're going to be wiping out most of your opponents as well. It's a rather nice older style card there again. Next up then, we're going to go to the Sorceries, again, in CMC order. So first off, we've got Burn from Within for X and a red. It's going to deal X to target creature or player, but again... This is a lovely one, because if a creature is dealt damage this way, it's going to lose Indestructible. And then if it does die, you're going to exile it as well. So, so many uses. Always keep hold of this one. Don't just waste it on something which hasn't got the Indo, unless you really have to. Perforos's Intervention is X and a red, and you choose one. You can have either an X1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste to sacrifice being in the next end step. Not big fan of that one. It's all about this one. Perforos's intervention is going to deal twice X damage to target creature or player. So even if you haven't got a lot of mana out, this one is really going to ping for a lot of damage at any point during the game, really. Excuse the glare on this one. It's the Shatter Skull Smashing. This is also a land flip one. So for X and 2 red, you're going to deal X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. But then if you deal six or more, it's going to deal twice that damage. So again, a nice way of getting rid of two or three bigger problems on the board. And with Tor Ralph, hopefully you're going to ping that excess damage across to get rid of some of the other little annoying bits as well. Or if not, just knock down your opponent's life. So, another one. Pinging off those targets. Jaya's Immolating Inferno for X and 2 red. Obviously, you can only cast a Legendary Sorcerer if you control a Legendary Creature or Planeswalker, but if you're going to do this and you haven't got Toralf out, then you deserve a slap. <laughs> so this is going to deal X damage to, up to each of up to three target creatures. Obviously, no kick or anything involved there, so that's always a nice one. Mizian Mortars is another staple one of mine in red. One in a red, you can deal four damage to target creature you don't control, or overload it for three and three red, for four damage to each creature you don't control. Obviously always nice early on, but if you can, always try and overload that. Shreds of Sanity is next. It's gonna let us return an instant and a sorcery from our graveyard to our hand. Not a lot of grave recursion in red, especially when it comes to your spells. So a lovely addition every time. Rather broken one here now. Uh, Jessica's Will is two and a red. If you control your commander as you cast it, you can choose both of these options. You can add one red for each card in target opponent's hand, or exile the top three cards of the library. You may play them this turn. Storm's Wrath is two and two red, and it's going to deal four damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Now, so that's not a lot of damage there, but obviously it's not very, very expensive. If you're going up against a lot of tokens or something like that, this one's really going to be useful. Or if not, you combine this with a couple of your other instants and sorceries. So most of the stuff goes, but then you can like pick off the remainder with something else. Chain Reaction is another win con in this one. So for two and two red, it's going to deal X to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Absolutely ridiculous. As I said, this one is going to be a win con for you with Torov. He's going to be burning everybody left, right and centre. Arrow of Devastation is a well-known one. It's going to lose the Indestructible and deal 5 damage to each creature and each non-Bolas Planeswalker. Immolating Gaia for 4 and 2 red is going to deal X to each creature and Planeswalker you don't control, which is a lovely effect, where X is the number of instants and sorceries in your graveyard. Yes, I know, it's filth. Blasphemous Act for 8 and a red. It's going to cost you one less for each creature on the battlefield, but it's going to deal 13 damage to every creature. Obviously, again, another easy win for you here. And then our last sorcery today is Volcanic Salvo. It's 10 and 2 red, but it's going to cost you X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. So odds are you're not going to be paying a lot for this whatsoever. It's going to deal 6 damage up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. So obviously, it might seem like it's going to cost a lot, but odds are, I mean, with Torah, right, you're only going to be paying seven to deal six to two targets. 
And then last of all, we're going to do a quick rundown of the creatures. First of all, we have a young Pyromancer. It's a lovely one in any burn deck. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you can get yourself a red elemental creature. Always nice for the chump block. Or if you really need to, you can go wide. Don't know how many you could be casting. A Runaway Steamkin is a lovely one for your mana. One and one red for a 1-1. One, one. If you're going to cast an, a red spell at all. And he's got fewer than three plus one plus one encounters. You give him a counter. Remove three of those to add three red mana. So obviously this one's always going to be uptick and giving you additional mana all the time. Thermo Alchemist is a simple one. It's a defender. Zero three for one and a red. You can tap to deal one damage to each opponent. But then whenever you cast an instant or source, you can untap him. So just nice because of the speed. You can get him out nice and fast. Ping everybody. Our next one is an Electrostatic Field. Again, two to cast for a 0-4 Defender. Whenever you cast an Instant or Sorcery, each opponent is going to take one damage from the Electrostatic Field. Doesn't seem like a lot, but they do really, really add up over time. Next up, we've got a... Satire? Sati? If anyone actually knows how to pronounce these. We have so many arguments in our group. He's one in a red. He's um, a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent. Not reading that right at all. He's also going to deal that much to a creature that player controls. So in the case of obviously like the ones where you can take it to a permanent, if you've got this on the field and they've got a problem out, hit the enemy. Hit the creature. Hopefully have some excess. Torath will just hit that straight back onto the enemy again. Humble Defector. This is lovely just because it's going to draw you two cards. You've got to pass it along every time. But odds are people aren't going to be blowing this up because they like the politics involved. Gadrak, the Crown Scourge, is a nice cheap 2-1 red 5-4 flyer. Admittedly, he can't attack until you've got four or more artifacts. But at the beginning of each end step, you can create a treasure for each non-token creature that's died this turn. So obviously you're going to be getting racking up those artifacts nice and quickly. You might not even want to use him as an attacker. He's just a nice, cheap, flying blocker for early on in the game as well. Grinning Ignis is two and a red for an elemental. You can pay one red to return it to its owner's hand to add that two and a red back to your mana pool. So you can only use it at sorcery speed, but if you do get a little bit mana screwed later on, this one can be a real lifesaver. Arnie, Broken Bow. I've only mainly got this one in here because of the fact he's legendary. So obviously he can use the hammer if he needs to. He's got haste on a 3 to cast 3-3. Three, three, and you can boast him to really up his power on that attack as well. Boast you can use as the creature attacks. So obviously just pay that one. Just really up his attack power. Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort. It's an essential. It's a defender with reach for 3. It's a 0-3 but it's going to give all of your creatures haste. And haste is your game changer in red. That's what no one else has. Really old school one again here. It's an Uthton Troll for two and a red. He's a 2-2. Two, two. Really simple. Just regenerating for one. Um, he's going to keep coming back after you destroy all the creatures on the board each time if you can afford it. It's going to be a lovely chump blocker which you can keep bringing back as well. Do miss the regenerate. They don't do enough of that nowadays. Apparently it's too complicated to understand. Uh, Gutter Snipe is 2 and a red for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, he's going to deal 2 damage to each opponent. So as you notice, there's lots and lots of ways for us to slowly ping your opponent's life down without even actually hitting them with the spells. An oldie but a goodie. It's Sisters of the Flame here for 2 red and 1. She's a 2-2, two, two, but you can tap to add a red mana. You don't get this much at all. So... Not the best in the world, not going to lie. Could easily be replaced by a much better card. But, beautiful. Leyline Tyrant. It's a 4 to cast, 4-4 four, four flyer. This one works beautifully with your Braid of Fire as well. So obviously, um, it's, you don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. So that Braid of Fire can provide you with that cumulative red mana for your whole turn. Which means you don't just have to use instance which is a lovely effect and then obviously when this dies you can pay any amount of red and when you do it's going to deal that much to any target which again if you have got that red mana open it's really going to help out Toralf because he's just going to ping 
all of that around until there's nothing left. A new one left. Again, this one's in here because he's a legendary Greech Dragon. Uh, it's four to cast for a 4-4 four, four flyer. You can kick him for three to get yourself another 4-4. Four, four. So just cheap flyer. Two for cheap as well. Legendary, you can hold the hammer. Again, there's m probably much better ones you could put in here. Uh, next up, we've got the Wildfire Eternal for three and a red. He's a 1-4 with a flicked four. So if he becomes blocked, Defender player is going to lose four life no matter what. But then if he attacks and he isn't blocked, so you get to cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. Which obviously in here, lovely. Torbran is our legendary dwarf. 2-4 for three red and one. And every red source you control which deals damage is going to do an additional two on top. So again, really, really up on these small pings into much bigger things as we go along. The Warfire Javelinier is going to enter and deal X to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the number of instants or sorceries. Again, not an amazing, amazing one, but he's going to do a massive hit, hopefully, as he comes in. Terror of the Peaks. Very expensive, but my god, is she beautiful. So she's five to cast for a 5-4 flyer. Spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks are going to cost them an additional three life to cast. But the important thing is, when another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Chair of the Peaks is going to deal damage equal to that creature's power to any target. And obviously, as I keep saying, with Tor Ralph out on the field, this could be a fast game if you get this one out as well. Frenzy's Saddle Brute is next. He's an Orc Warrior, 5 4 with haste for 5. And he's going to give all creatures your opponent's control haste as long as they're not attacking you. Which obviously, you're going to be drawing a lot of attention. You're red, you're burning everyone in sight. But, hopefully, this will be a bit of a deterrent for your mates. Almost there. Next one up is a Glorybringer. It's a 4-4 Dragon for 5, flying in haste. You can exert him as he attacks to deal 4 damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. So again, nice way just to suddenly hit with an extra bit of damage. Not a lot. But for five to cast for a 4-4 four, four with haste, can't grumble. Neheb the Eternal is going to be one of our mana rampers for us here. He's got that lovely five to cast, 4-6, afflict three. Beginning of your post-combat main phase, you're going to add one red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. Absolutely essential in this deck, he is. Charmbreaker Devils, a 5 and 1 red for a 4-4 four, four Devil. In the beginning of your upkeep, you can return an instant or sorcery at random from your graveyard to your hand. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, he's going to get plus 4, plus 0 until end of turn. It's mainly for this effect, to be honest, that I always have them in here, just to get those instants and sorceries back. They might be at random, but let's be honest, any of these are going to be useful back to your hand if you've got the mana for it. Next up is a Flame Blast Dragon for 4 and 2 red. He's a 5 5 flyer, and as he attacks, you can pay X and a red to do X damage to target creature or player. Enough said, really. Don't have to explain that one too hard. Shardra's Incinerator is an absolutely beautiful one. 5 and 1 red. She's a 6 6 elemental. It's going to cost you X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. She's got Trample, and just like our little satire, whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, she is going to ping that damage to one of their creatures as well. So obviously if you've got that and the Sati on the field at the same time, hit your opponent with one spell, you could be burning several of their creatures off. Spawn of Thraxus is another dragon. 5 and 2 red, so he's a little bit pricey. He's a 5-5 five, five flyer, but as he enters, he's going to deal damage to target creature or player equal to the number of mountains. So at least seven damage pinging off from him. Beautiful. And last, but by no means least, is Dracusef, the Mora Flames, for four and three red. He's a seven, seven flyer. And whenever he attacks, he's gonna deal four damage to any target and three damage to another two targets. So while you might not have a lot of excess from him, he's gonna deal with a lot of those smaller problems the opponents just like to keep hidden and away from you, like the Blood Artists, your Falcon Reef Nobles. 
So, that is my basic Toralf. Now, obviously, it works for me in my playgroup, but as I've always said, and I will always say, just because you find a good deck list online doesn't mean it's going to necessarily work in your playgroup. I'm not opposed to people using online deck lists. Obviously, I've done one myself. But, find, yeah, just tweak it as you go along. There's nothing wrong with that. Use good websites online to find those other cards with synergy which will help in your particular playgroup. I mean, I play a lot of red, so I can usually always find some good answers for against my opponents. So, as I said though, that was Tor Ralph, or as I lovingly call him, my husband Ralph. And hopefully next time we'll be doing another deck tech. I hope to see you then. If you'd like to leave a like, subscribe, and if you share as well, we highly appreciate it. See you next time.